a lot of what I'm going to speak to you today about is more of what we will do and where we're going, and not so much of what we've done already, but also how Monsanto sees Cloud Foundry and PaaS as really an enabler to our cloud strategy. So I'll throw up the lawyer slide. Um, <laughs> probably not a whole lot there that you haven't seen before. But uh, really what I wanted to summarize and say is, you know, don't use the contents of my presentation as the, the sole basis to go out and buy a bunch of Monsanto stock, um, although our stock is doing pretty good right now. So who is Monsanto? For those who don't know, Monsanto is a 20-something thousand employee company, and we're headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri, where I happen to be from. And our vision is really all about sustainable agriculture. And we plan to drive that vision by producing more, so increasing the yield of our core crops, while conserving more, so reducing the amount of the natural resources that we have to put into those crops. And in the process, we'll improve the lives of farmers and people around the world. And I'll end the sales pitch there, but I've included a link at the bottom of the slide if you want to check it out. It goes into a short video a little bit more about what, of our, what our pledge is. And I think it's a really meaningful commitment and one to, that I'm proud to play a part in. So I just told you that Monsanto's an agriculture company, right? And how interesting is that to a bunch of people sitting around at a tech conference? Well, I can tell you from someone who actually grew up in a farming community, even though I wasn't directly involved in farming, that farming today is actually decept deceptively technologically advanced, and it's increasingly information driven. And that's important because if you want to use that information to drive innovation and to drive competitive advantage, you need lots of software. And software is something that probably everyone here is interested in. And you need a platform that can drive that software at a disruptive pace. So I told you we need lots of software. We need agility to drive it at a fast pace. Um, we need massive scale. We want self-service. So cloud computing seemed like the rational path to go down. But the problem is, for an enterprise, you can't just enable and open the floodgates to Amazon, right? Because there's a lot of real concerns that you have to tackle first. And those are concerns around security, data classification, you know, how do you shift your operational and your financial models. And almost as important, you can't just take your internal development team and say, hey, start developing cloud applications. Because if you do that, um, you start to hit some common barriers. First of all, you'll find out that most enterprise software stacks are not cloud friendly. If you're like most enterprises, like Monsanto, you probably have a standard internal technology stack based on one of the big enterprise software providers like the IBMs or the Oracles. And those technology stacks are great. You know, they're scalable. You can deploy them quickly. But the fact of the matter is they probably just won't be available at an external cloud. And that's an issue. Secondly, agile development doesn't work without an agile infrastructure to work with. So at Monsanto, we've taken great strides recently to move our development organizations f into agile methodology. And that's great, but if you don't give that development organization an agile infrastructure to op operate on, then you know, it might still take that developer a week's worth of time thousands of dollars to get a server to deploy their code to. And if that's the case, then they're really not being agile. And finally, you'll find out that emerging technologies are hard for an enterprise to try out, and they're even harder to adopt. You know, if you have one of these enterprise software stacks that I mentioned earlier, you probably also put a large amount of investment in those. You have a large support organization that is focused on supporting those technologies. And so those organizations are focused more on standardization, right? And they're not really focused on how do I enable innovation and how do I let my developers quickly try out new technologies. So if you look at all these barriers, um, what we decided was that really if we wanted to enable an external cloud, we almost first had to enable an internal cloud. 
And that's really what we started looking at Cloud Foundry and PaaS um, to facilitate. So by looking at Cloud Foundry, we wanted to enable and accelerate Monsanto's adoption of Agile, DevOps, and continuous deployment, continuous release. We wanted to find this technology stack that is open, and that's really important for us to avoid vendor lock-in, right? And we wanted to start decoupling applications from the infrastructure that they run on so that we can start to get application portability so we can move those applications between a variety of infrastructure providers, including internal and external. We wanted to increase that developer agility by enabling automated self-service. And finally, we wanted to keep the cost of entry low and buy versus build. And what I mean by this is we wanted to find a turnkey PaaS solution, right? Because we didn't want to invest a large amount of time and resources into building a cloud infrastructure internally from scratch on our own. So where are we so far? Back in December, we started an assessment of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And what we found is that Cloud Foundry and Bosch are both stable, open platforms, and they have a lot of large adopters. You know, starting back in December, um, we, we were investigating the beta product of Pivotal. So I guess you could call that a 0 0.9 version. And we had a lot of concerns internally of, you know, this is a, this is a beta product. How much faith can you put in, in a product that's 0 0.9? And the reality is Cloud Foundry as a platform has been around since 2009, right? So really what the 0.9 or the 1.2 version today is all about is it's the pivotal package supported version that can run internally in your environment. And there are lots of large adopters already who have actually built platforms on the technology. And a lot of those vendors are represented in the audience today, but just to name a few of the, the more notable enterprise ones, IBM, Verizon, CenturyLink, HP, and G have all taken this platform and started to actually build real products on top of it. So there's a lot of momentum behind it already. We found that the platform is very developer focused in its current iteration, but I think that's okay because that was probably really the intent, right? But a downfall of that is from someone who comes from a more of a sysadmin background is some of the administrative and support capabilities are still maturing through the product. And I'll give a couple of examples. So monitoring and alerting. There's very little of that that just comes out of the box. Um, the, there's AD integration, but really it's not the way that an enterprise would probably want to see it yet. And that there's some infrastructure layer specific features that still need to mature a little bit more before we would really say they're how we want them right out of the box. So there are, there are a few gaps, but I think that's okay, right? Because the beauty of Cloud Foundry is that it is that open platform, and it's very extensible, right? So you can extend the platform to fill any one of these gaps or any gaps that might exist for your technology, for your organization, and that's exactly what some of these large vendors who have already adopted it have done. We think that Pivotal can provide a turnkey solution for PaaS, right? So they take Cloud Foundry, they wrap it with some GUIs, some installers, some 24 by seven support. And then very important for Monsanto and probably other enterprises is that they support that turnkey PaaS internally on your vSphere environment. vSphere is our enterprise hypervisor. We've put a large investment in that layer. We have support teams who know how to support that layer. So having a vendor that can give us a platform layer that sits on top of an infrastructure layer that we're very comfortable with and already know how to support is really beneficial. We think that based on what we've seen in the assessment, various activities of the application development lifecycle can be increased or improved by 50% or more. And this is kind of a rough number, but really another key thing here is we don't think that 50% efficiency gain is just limited to a subset of people, right? If you're like Monsanto, you probably have multiple delivery teams, multiple operations teams, lots of people involved in release management, and then of course lots of developers. So this 50% improvement can really be spread across all those groups. And if you can spread it across all those people, that really makes the benefit and the value of Cloud Foundry all that, all that much more. So I'll share with you um, just a quick early success story we had um, for a developer who was able to go from a week to just a few minutes. So we hired a developer, and 
His first task was to come up with an application that would do some integration between JIRA and our CMDB. And internally, our, our application server layer is WebLogic. That's kind of our standard. So that was the platform that he was told to code to. So he wrote his code, tried to deploy it, and it didn't work. So he started doing some troubleshooting, and he did the little troubleshooting he was able to do just because of the permissions that he has on that WebLogic platform as a developer. Right? So he didn't get very far. He had to open some support tickets. So he worked with the support team for a while, and finally they agreed that he was trying to use a version of a library or a function that just wasn't compatible with the version of WebLogic that we're running internally. So he's kind of at a standstill now. Right? A week of time has passed. Um, his deadline for his project's coming up. What is he going to do? So he reached out to one of the developers that was working with us on our Cloud Foundry assessment, told him what was going on. They made him an account. And within a matter of minutes, he had his code deployed on Cloud Foundry, and everything was running. And I really like that story because it sort of illustrates a few things that Cloud Foundry can enable for you. First, that developer would have been able to do a lot more troubleshooting on his own in, a, in an environment where, in cloud, like Cloud Foundry, where he has more permissions, right? It sort of it puts the tools to solve the problem in the hands of the person who actually has the problem. And if you can do that, then you avoid a lot of the finger pointing and back and forth that can sort of occur between your support organizations and your developers of, you know, the issue is your code or no, the issue is your platform. And finally, it really illustrates the flexibility of Cloud Foundry, right? The, the big issue he had here was, you know, we only have one application server environment, WebLogic, and we only run one version of that. So something like Cloud Foundry allows you to run any number of runtimes with any number of versions simultaneously without issue. So that flexibility gives the developer a lot of benefit. So I started putting this slide together back in the pivotal Cloud Foundry, say, 1.0 days. And part of our assessment was, OK, let's look at what we would really consider required out-of-the-box functionality for an enterprise pass and see how close does that product get to delivering what, what we came up with. So I put this slide together with input from Pivotal's roadmap. And I won't go over every item in here because you know, these items actually might be different for your organization. But what I would like to showcase is where are we today? So Cloud Foundry, Pivotal Cloud Foundry 1.2 is out today. And as you can see, Pivotal and the team have deployed basically where they said they were going to be. And I think this is really important because it shows you sort of the focus and the velocity that Pivotal and the entire community are sort of taking this platform and turning it into a true enterprise solution. So where are we going from here? We want to proceed with an internal Cloud Foundry environment. And by doing that, we'll be able to provide an internal proving grounds for cloud applications, cloud application architectures, and processes, including DevOps. And if we can give that internal proving grounds to our development teams, we can mitigate some of the challenges that we have with our cost models, our security, our data classification that we would have if we went directly to an external cloud offering. It also allows us to start shifting from proprietary, non-cloud-friendly software stacks to those open source technologies that actually would be available for use at an external cloud. To do this, we want to target non-business critical apps, and we want to run all the environments all the way through prod on Cloud Foundry. And we see this kind of as key because you really don't learn a lot if the only thing you put on Cloud Foundry when you're trying it out is just development apps, right? Or just apps that only one or two people use. To get the real value out of it and to, and to learn what you need to know, you need to have real life business applications that actually serve meaningful business processes. So that's what we want to do. And if we can do that, then we can start to gather some real life metrics on what are the improvements to the various aspects of our development life cycle. You know, how close to that 50% efficiency gain can we really get? And if you do that, then you can start to really build the value. What's the TCO of Cloud Foundry to your organization? It'll also allow us to start to assess what's the actual impact 
of some of those gaps that I called out in the roadmap slide. You know, maybe some of them aren't really as important as we thought they were. Uh, maybe there's gaps that we didn't see that we'll find. And then based on our completed assessment, we want to proceed with a full-scale deployment in 2015. And I really think this is possible, and we're at where we are today, because our senior management has a commitment for cloud that it's really not an if, but a how. And my organization's role as part of Monsanto IT is to partner with the business and to drive revenue through disruptive innovation. And we really see Cloud Foundry and PaaS as foundational to that vision. So hopefully this was informational to other enterprises who are sort of at the same leg of their journey with Cloud Foundry as I am. Uh, thank you all for listening. And yes, we are hiring. <laughs>